So we are going to talk about the basics of FX modules. In order to do that, we're first going to talk a little bit about modules over a field F. In the case where M is finitely generated, we can write it as isomorphic to F to the N, and we call M a vector space. Then we can write the elements of M as ordered tuples, F1, F2, and so on, to Fn, where these are all elements of the field F. Then if we want to look at the module structure of M, if we multiply this by some element in the field, all we have to do is just multiply each component of the vector. So we get AF1, AF2, and so on to AFN. So this is what happens if M is a module over a field. Now let's suppose that instead of being an F module, M is an FX module. So it's a module over the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the field F. Now we know that F, this field, is a subring of the ring of polynomials Fx. And because M is an Fx module, it has to satisfy the module axioms for all of the elements in the field. And that means that M is also a module over F. In other words, every Fx module is also a vector space. And we already showed what happens when we multiply by an element of a field when we're looking at a vector space. All we have to do now is figure out what happens when we multiply by x. So let's look at the module axioms to get some information about what happens when we multiply by x. First of all, one of the module axioms is that x times m1 plus m2 is equal to x m1 plus x m2. And we also know that x times cm, where c is some element in the field, this is going to be associative, so this is equal to xc times m. But we know that in the polynomial ring, x and c commute. So we can flip these around. This is going to be equal to cx times m. And then again, using associativity, we get c times xm. So x times cm equals c times xm. Now, if we think about multiplication by x as a function from the module m to itself, these two conditions are exactly the conditions for x to be a linear transformation. So what we've learned here is that an fx module is an f module, a vector space m, and a linear transformation from m to m that describes multiplication by x. And it turns out that if you look at the module axioms, there aren't any other constraints that we need to place on the linear transformation. So we can pick any linear transformation that we want to describe multiplication by x. So when we define an fx module, we choose one specific linear transformation, and we use that to describe multiplication by x. Now, at least in the finitely generated case, we know that every linear transformation can be described by some matrix A. So this is an element in the n by n matrices over the field F. And using this matrix, we can say that x times m is equal to A times m. So this gives us a concrete way, once we have these vectors for the module, to describe what does multiplication by x look like. And this is actually enough to describe multiplication by any polynomial. Because if we think about x to the k times m, we can write this as x to the k minus 1 times xm. And this xm, we know, is going to be equal to am. Now am is just another vector in the module. So we can repeat the same process. We can write this as x to the k minus 2 times xam. And if this is a vector, x times am is the same thing as a times am. So this gives us x to the k minus 2 times a squared m. And of course, we can keep repeating this over and over and over again, dot, dot, dot. We get a to the k times m. So if we look at an arbitrary polynomial, this fact gives us all the information that we need. So let's look at exactly what that looks like. 
Suppose we have some specific polynomial f of x. And we're going to write f of x as c0 plus c1x plus blah, 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 cdx to the d. And we're going to ask what happens if we take this polynomial and we multiply it onto some vector m. So f of x times m is equal to c0 plus c1x plus dot 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 cdx to the d times m. Now when we do this, we know that a module, we can split up the sum. So this gives us c0m plus c1xm plus dot 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 plus cdx to the dm. And we know here xm is equal to am and similarly x to the d times m is the same as a to the d times m. So we can basically just go through here and replace all of the x's with a's. And this is going to give us the same result because that's how we define a. Now that we have this, notice that we've taken the polynomial c0 plus c1x all the way up, and we've just replaced all the x's with a's. We could factor out, if we wanted, the m to the outside again. And if we do that, the inside here, this is the exact same polynomial as before, except all the x's are now a's. So this whole thing in the inside is f of a times m. We're taking the polynomial and substituting in x equals a. So this is exactly how we multiply elements in the module by an arbitrary polynomial f of x. Like we said earlier, under the module axioms, there aren't any additional restrictions besides the multiplication by x as a linear transformation. One of the consequences of that is if we take any matrix we want, any matrix A, we can always construct an fx module where the elements are n by n vectors, and then multiplication by x is described as multiplication by a. And one of the reasons that fx modules are useful is that sometimes we can use information about the module described by a to learn about the original matrix a as well. And so this gives us extra tools when we're studying linear transformations.